Hello, it's Darren from Moonhair Studio, and today we're going to look in depth at the inserts button on the QCOM Pro X. How can you control third party plugins with any door? And for Cubase users, stick around to the end because we're going to revolutionize the way you see the information displayed on your QCOM Pro X. <music> Now, nobody buys a MIDI control surface to make life harder for themselves. But there are some functions which seem a little bit more esoteric, maybe a little harder to get your head around. And one of those, I think, is the inserts button. It's really powerful because it gives you control over all of your third party plugins that you've got on your FX chain. And you can do it without the use of the mouse. So I'm right handed. If I've got my hand on the mouse, I can't play my keyboard. So I like to grab a plugin using the inserts command and then have a little listen live to what it's actually doing. And then I can play around with the parameters direct from the desk and actually hear what that is going to do. So let's try to demystify this whole process and make it so much easier for you. So I've actually superimposed the LCD strip from below the meter bridge down here. This is not the one that you would actually see above the fader bank. It's just to make it easier for you to see what's going on. And also, I'm only going to use the QCOM Pro X, even though I've got an extender. If you've got extenders, that's great because the same process will happen, but you'll have to scroll up and down through the pages a little less than just with the one base unit. But we can do everything we need to from the Pro X. So with that out the way, let's get on with the editing. Now, generally, your unit will be set in pan mode, but we're going to press the inserts button and that brings up this screen. And you can see that I've got uh, an insert FX, the Valhalla Supermassive there. Um, that's on my Grandeur Piano track. And you can actually scroll up and down through your different um, tracks if you want. So I've got Sable installed on that and I've got a different effect on it, IFX1 there. But we'll stick with the piano. I'm going to also hit the edit button so that we can bring up the channel strip and you can see what I've got installed on here. So I've got nine different um, channel FX. I've got still some uh, spaces where I could put some more in if I wanted to. You can fill this up completely if you want and you'll be able to get to all of them. I have heard it said that you can only scroll through four, but that's not the case. You can edit as many as you've got on the channel strip itself. Now, there's three buttons that actually work on page one. Um, they're universal for whatever effects you've got installed. The first one is the scroll. So this scrolls up and down through all the different effects that you've got on your channel. So as you can see, I've got uh, nine different ones there. And then the last ones, it just says no effect because there's nothing actually in those spaces. The second one turns your effect on and off. And I found that the easiest way to do this, because you can just scroll backwards and forwards and it will do it. But if you push down you only have to click a very, you know, just one click will get you on or off. And you'll see that the LCD lights up when it's on and is blank when it's off. And then the final one is to actually step up and down through the different types of effects that you've got. So you could say move to one of the channels where we don't have anything and then use number three to just scroll through the different effects that you've got stored there. Choose the one you want and then you're good to go. And you'll notice that it comes up on the screen ready to edit. Now I'll link in the description and also in the video, but I did a video on how to curate your own lists of plugins so that you didn't have this massive default list to scroll through every time you wanted to reach for, say, a, a reverb that you use again and again. So I've actually got one of these little lists stored here. It's just my um, go to dynamics and reverbs. But that does mean that when we scroll on the screen, we are only going to get that curated list. We won't be able to get to everything else. So if you're finding that you, you haven't got all of the effects that you expected to come up on your QCon, you will need to select your default list or a larger list 
um, that you've already curated because that will give you access to everything that you want but until you've done that you're not going to be able to use all of those different plugins so let's just uh, select a compressor for now um, but if we scroll up now you can see that we've got access to all of those things rather than just those six or seven that I had curated and of course every time you enter one of those in it automatically opens up ready to use now if you're editing say channel one and you've got Valhalla on there it doesn't matter whether you turn it on or off it doesn't actually automatically come up on your screen once you've already got something programmed in there it's not an automatic thing so if you don't want to go up here and click on the edit with your mouse and you know why would you if you're trying to use the QCon um, to edit everything you can just turn this one click back and forwards and it will open up your plugin so that's a quick way to get to it so I've got standard piano sound here we'll turn on Valhalla and now you can hear it and to edit it we're going to page down to page two um, and you'll see that if I move the delay that moves the delay on the screen as well and whatever parameter you pick up will work up there now I sometimes find it easier to use the flip button and actually use the faders to control this because you can get much bigger moves much more easily than turning the rotary pot so that's a good way to edit so here we go awful effect um, but the complications come when you've got a number of pages and you're going to have to page down maybe say to get to the bypass um, that might be something that you use quite a bit and you don't want it on page four um, and I mean it, it's it's working but it's not great to have it in that location and this is a relatively simple uh, plugin because we've only got actually three pages of parameters plus the first page which turns it on if we have a look at some of the other um, we'll page back up again and have a look at some of the other insert effects um, we've got some that are fairly simple but for instance this one the amp rack has 23 pages and when you start to look at some of the screens that you get when you're scrolling down you realize that this is stream of consciousness you know there's no way you can work out what you're doing with that plugin so I'm going to show you another method of using complex plugins or certainly plugins that are your go-to's that will make it much easier for your workflow. So on my previous video about using third-party plugins, I had an interesting comment from Henry that said in Cubase, you can use the remote control editor to actually make things a lot more straightforward. So let's have a look at how we do that. So using Valhalla as an example, what you would do with your plugin is you click the functions drop down here and select remote control editor. And these are the various pages that you will see displayed on your QCon. And you can see that some of these names are quite long. Really for the QCon, you don't want anything that's more than probably six letters long. Um, otherwise everything starts to overlap so you could literally just retype these and we could call that warp for instance which would be easier to see um, delay and then when you apply that you will notice that it changes on our screen here and you can see that this is much more easy to read Likewise, if you've got something that you really want on that first screen, you don't want to be scrolling down. So the bypass, for instance, you can just click, drag and drop. And then that will appear there. As soon as you hit apply, you will see that on your main screen as well. So there's a lot of scope to reorder things and rename them. But also, if you're really just looking at something where you've got, I don't know, up, up to eight controls that you use regularly and the rest you very rarely touch you could in fact just learn it all from scratch so if we click on remove all assignments it will ask you to confirm that 
and now you've got a blank page. So let's click on this assignable knob. We'll click learn and we'll put feedback on there. I will change the name because it's quite a long one. It's eight, eight letters long. So we'll just change that to feedback. And you can see you've got a main label. You can change for different letter labels if you want, but we'll just stick with that main label. And next we'll click on this one and we'll select warp and we'll name that warp. And this one, uh, for instance, delay, and we'll just call that delay. Oops. And if I apply that now, you will see that we've got page one and it's just set to feedback, warp and delay. So I can immediately get to the things that I really, really want to use. And you could put as many as you like in and, and reorder them in whatever way you like. But that way you've got the stuff that you want and it looks nice and neat on your screen. So if at any stage you completely mess this process up and you want to start again, you can restore the factory defaults from here. Just click on that, click apply, and you'll be back to where you were. If you don't need all of the pages that you've got here, you can easily uh, remove them just by clicking on these little um, minuses here, but you can also add pages. So if you decided later on that you wanted to add more controls, then that's perfectly all right. And you can just add as many of these pages as you want. So it's quite a versatile system here. Now, once you've applied it, that is saved. You don't have to do anything else. You can close the remote control editor down. And if we close this down, then the next time we actually turn it on and bring it up, um, you will see on your screen on page one that we've just got the things that we actually programmed in and that will be in there permanently. So that is a very powerful way to get to the real nub of the controls that you want for your go-to plugins. I mean, obviously you probably won't program in, you know, 300 plugins, but those ones that you're using again and again, that you just want to get to straight from the QCon, then that's a really useful way of doing it. So one of the questions I've been asked is whether if you have an extender fitted, it displays more information and it does. The pages scroll over to however many extenders you've got. So if you've got three extenders, you will be able to see four pages of information simultaneously. You may not have four pages. I mean, we haven't on this particular one. Now, that's an advantage, but it could also be a disadvantage with those bigger setups in that this page one could be way over to your left and a little bit inaccessible. Now, on my system, I've just got the one uh, extender. So what I would probably do in this situation, I'd rather have it on my QCon. So I'll just drag these down to page two. And then when I display that information, um, it's just going to come up on my QCon and my extender remains blank. So everything's nice and close to where I want it to be. And likewise, if you've got uh, three extenders and you want to uh, have the information down here or maybe on extender two, then you could just add an extra page and then you could drag everything down to page four and that would sit nicely on your QCon Pro X. And you can just be creative with this process. You might decide if you've got an extender, you always want your bypass button over here on the extender, and then you're just going to use your Pro X for those main controls. And this is a, a format that you could use. Stick that on page one, so it's on the extender channel eight. And then I've got my controls over here, um, just accessible on the QCon Pro X. Um, you know, just, just create. Do it the way that you feel is going to work for you. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you did. You don't have to subscribe to this channel. Just pop in every now and again. And obviously leave your comments below because that's what generates these videos in the first place. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one.